I'm Dr. Teresa Lyons, founder of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. Today's Ask Dr. Lyons question is, does my child with autism have mitochondrial dysfunction? Well, if your child has developmental delay, regression, social impairment, or intellectual disability, or things like ADHD, anxiety, OCD, or depression, then it would be important to keep watching this video because there's information you need to know. Let me get back into my studio and I'll teach you the science. If your goal is an optimal outcome for your child with autism, it's really important to understand comorbidities. Comorbidities is defined as the simultaneous presence of two chronic diseases or conditions in a patient. There's evidence of an association between various pathophysiological abnormalities and autism, but the exact relationship has not been defined yet. And there are treatments for some of these comorbidities, and those treatments are really well known. Therefore, there's absolutely no reason for your child to suffer with certain comorbidities. It's very common to confuse a comorbidity with being just part of autism. And in most cases, it's not. Autism has many diseases that are comorbid. So it's really important to separate the two and start healing them all. Here's a list of autism comorbidities. Seizure and epilepsy, neurotransmitter disorders, sleep disorders, metabolic disorders, there's six of them, immune disorders, and gastrointestinal disorders. Today we're going to do a deep dive on metabolic disorders and we're going to look at the sixth of six metabolic disorders and that is mitochondrial dysfunction. I have a video on each one of these comorbidities, but today's video we're going to discuss mitochondrial dysfunction. What is the mitochondria? That's a very good question. More than a billion years ago, a primitive bacteria invaded a single cell anaerobic organism and it invaded it not to kill it but actually established a symbiotic relationship which has been maintained and refined over history. Mitochondria, that's the descendants of the original bacteria, are known as being distinct cellular organelles highly efficient in their ability to produce cellular energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, ATP. Said another way, mitochondria are a cell's internal organ responsible for making energy. So you can think of mitochondria as the cell's powerhouse. But mitochondria don't operate in isolation, right? This is your body. So our body is a whole organism. There's not much that happens exactly in isolation in our body. So neurotransmitters and neurotropic factors control and or influence mitochondrial dynamics. Major function of the mitochondria in neurons include the regulation of calcium and redox signaling, development and synaptic plasticity, and the arbitration of cell survival and death. These are all hugely important in an optimally functioning body. Redox is also known as a comorbidity of autism. I have a special video on that. Mitochondria is in all of our cells, not just in our neurons. Mitochondria actually replicate. Mitochondria actually transport, so they actually move from one cell to another. It's absolutely fascinating. And mitochondria are recruited to certain parts of our body when our body needs more energy, more of what mitochondria can do. So this is a, a very dynamic aspect of our body and it's a very important aspect. Okay, so mitochondria and development. This is something that's not well known except for certain scientists and stuff. Mitochondria are very important in a child's development. So during the development of the nervous system, neural stem cells proliferate and then differentiate into neurons. Now these newborn neurons then grow an axon and dendrites and they eventually form synapses. During this process, many newly generated neurons undergo programmed cell death, apoptosis. So you have this kind of explosion of growth and then the body prunes them back. 
through apoptosis. Neuronal pruning has actually been identified as an issue of those with autism. So this is one of the reasons why your child's head is always measured because they want to see is the head size bigger. In many of those with autism, they have a larger head size because of this pruning process that isn't done. And so again, this all relates back to mitochondria and how mitochondria are very important in a child's development. So indications of needs. I know you're probably thinking, what are the symptoms from mitochondrial dysfunction? You know, you want to analyze, is mitochondrial dysfunction something your child is experiencing in addition to autism? Typical symptoms from mitochondrial dysfunction are developmental delay or regression, social impairment, intellectual disability, ADHD, anxiety, OCD, or depression, language impairment, seizures, weakness and or fatigue, gastrointestinal symptoms, and endocrine disturbance. So if your child has any of these symptoms, it might indicate mitochondrial dysfunction. That's obviously something you want to work with your physician in diagnosing. Mitochondrial dysfunction and autism. So this is probably why you're here watching my video. You're interested in mitochondria as well as autism. So again, mitochondrial dysfunction can be comorbid with autism. Mitochondrial dysfunction, abbreviated here as MD, was once thought to be uncommon, but is now considered the most recognized cause of metabolic disease. That's pretty shocking. It was in 1998 when it was first proposed that autism may be a disorder of impaired mitochondrial dysfunction. Now it's more generally accepted that autism and mitochondrial dysfunction are comorbid. Only about 5% of those with autism meet the diagnosis, the kind of classical diagnosis of mitochondrial dysfunction. However, over 30% of those with autism show abnormal biomarkers of mitochondrial dysfunction. So there is now this scientific debate going on in the literature saying that those with autism have a unique and yet to be defined mitochondrial problem. So again, this is more kind of cutting edge. Scientists and physicians are trying to figure out what exactly is the mitochondrial dysfunction in those with autism. Mitochondrial treatments. Yes, there are them. And classic treatments for mitochondrial dysfunction are carnitine, coenzyme Q10, B vitamins, antioxidants, vitamin C, and E. So you might be thinking, some of those treatments are actually related to other comorbidities. And yes, you're correct. So I have a video on carnitine, I have a video on B vitamins, and there is overlap in classic treatments for mitochondrial dysfunction with other comorbidities. So there hasn't been extensive clinical trials for autism and mitochondrial dysfunction, but some of the known mitochondrial treatments have been shown to improve poor autism symptoms in other studies. Since there can be numerous comorbidities in a person with autism, healing can occur, but it is hard to delineate with certainty what did exactly what, since there is so much overlap, and especially if your child has numerous comorbidities. Although with numerous comorbidities, you could use one supplement and it could actually target two comorbidities. So it's not all bad news. Mitochondria and the microbiota. More and more scientific evidence shows a link between gut dysbiosis and autism. Nitropropionic acid, which is produced by many plants and fungi, is a potential contaminant of processed rice and sugarcane. And there's rice and sugarcane in a lot of processed and already prepared foods. And unfortunately, it's a potent mitochondrial toxin that is capable of causing neurotoxicity. This is one of the many reasons why special diets are so efficient in healing autism symptoms and or comorbidities. Because special diets can rebalance the gut microbiota as well as you're eating pure whole foods that wouldn't have different contaminants. So special diets are super important in healing autism. And if you're interested in more references that I mentioned in this video, here they are.